Hello and welcome to HIVRNA Test Guide Podcast, your trusted source for HIV testing, with over 4,500 plus testing labs across the United States. You know, when you think about breakthroughs in healthcare, sometimes it's the speed and privacy that really feel revolutionary. Getting answers fast, on your own terms. And that's exactly what we're diving into today. We're looking at the, uh, the recent FDA green light for the instance one minute HIV self-test. This isn't just some minor product update. It feels like a really significant shift in public health strategy, almost removing some longstanding roadblocks overnight. So our mission for you today is to really unpack how this thing works. Yes, that 60 second result time is real. We'll look at the, frankly, incredible data behind it. And maybe most importantly, explore what this means for public health, specifically how it dismantles some major barriers to getting tested. Right. And this approval, it's more than just tech. It's a pivot point for, well, for decades. Things like stigma, needing clinic appointments, even just where you live. Those have created huge gaps in who gets tested. <gasps> this platform changes the accessibility equation. It brings that crucial first step diagnosis directly to the individual. Okay, let's get into that core innovation then. The speed is what grabs you first. The Insti-HIV self-test. 60 seconds. Is that is that accurate? For real? It genuinely is 60 seconds. Yeah. I mean, think about it. That's faster than filling out intake forms at a clinic, right? Yeah. Uh, the test uses a flow-through technology that just makes results appear incredibly fast. And the procedure itself, super simple, designed for home use. How simple are we talking about? Just a single drop of blood from your fingertip. That's it. The whole focus is speed and simplicity. That's what makes it usable for, well, anyone. And that simplicity, it seems intentional. The company, Biolitical, they've been quite clear. It's about more than just fast results. It's about uh, empowerment. Exactly. That's the word they use. You hear their CEO, Robert Mackey, talk about it. The goal is empowering people to take control of their health yeah. without waiting for clinic appointments or lab results. It yeah. gives you autonomy. Right. A private one-minute tool means you don't need to rearrange work, wait potentially weeks. That autonomy is vital for people who might otherwise just skip testing entirely. That makes sense. Empowerment is great, but it only works if people feel they can actually use it. So what are the big barriers, the walls this test really tackles? Well, the sources point to three main ones. Stigma, cost, and location. Let's start with stigma. Okay. For many people, HIV testing still carries, unfortunately, a lot of shame or fear. Just walking into a clinic, maybe being seen by someone you know, that public aspect is a major deterrent. And then there's the practical stuff, like if you live far away or work multiple jobs. Precisely. Location and cost often go hand in hand. Traditional testing can mean time off work, so lost income. It means travel, sometimes long distances. The Insta test lets people test on their own terms, in their own bathroom, maybe a hotel room if they're traveling. Total privacy. Total privacy. That discretion is probably the single biggest factor for reaching groups who've been historically harder to reach. You completely remove the need to physically show up somewhere. That shift from needing to be at a clinic to just doing it yourself privately, that feels like the real pivot here for access. It absolutely is. And uh, Biolitical's VP of Scientific Affairs, Anna Subramanian, she made a point about this. She said the FDA approval reflects the scientific integrity of our work and our commitment to expanding access to rapid, reliable diagnostics. So the science is backing up this public health shift. And crucially, where can people actually get this? Yeah, important point. It's slated for major retailers and online soon. So it becomes something you can just pick up easily. Okay, so fast, convenient, private, checks a lot of boxes. But speed means nothing without accuracy, right? Let's talk about the science. How reliable is this thing? This is really where it gets impressive. The data that went to the FDA, it's remarkable. The InstiHIV self-test showed 100% sensitivity and 100% specificity. Wow, okay, 100% is, you don't hear that often in diagnostics. For someone taking the test, what does 100% sensitivity and specificity actually mean, like in practical terms? That's a fair question, because 100% is exceptionally rare. Sensitivity means if you do have HIV, the test correctly flags it 100% of the time in their studies. Specificity means if you don't have HIV, the test correctly shows that 100% of the time. So according to the data submitted, zero false positives, zero false negatives. And they weren't comparing it against some old basic screening method, were they? It was benchmarked against a high standard. Exactly. The comparison was against a fourth generation HIV antigen antibody ELASA test. That's a sophisticated lab test. Why is fourth gen significant? Because it detects both HIV antibodies and something called the P24 antigen. 
that antigen shows up earlier in an infection than antibodies do. So it allows for much earlier diagnosis compared to older antibody-only tests. So the incident is basically matching the reliability of an advanced lab test. But doing it in one minute with a drop of blood at home. Yes. That really underlines the achievement here. Speed and that level of reliability. And it's not like this technology just appeared out of nowhere. It has a track record. Yeah. The World Health Organization, the WHO, actually pre-qualified this test back in 2018. Ah, okay. And the core tech is based on their previous instant AHES antibody tests which already had approvals from the FDA, Health Canada, WHO. So it's internationally vetted stuff just now in a self-test format. Right. The science seems solid. But what about user error? Even a simple test, if someone's nervous, did they look at how easy people found it to actually use? They did. And that's critical for real-world adoption. Field studies show that 95% of patients found the self-test easy to use. 95%? That's high. Very high. And what's more, that same 95% said they'd use it again and recommend it to family and partners. That recommendation part, that feels huge. It suggests people trust it, which is often a big hurdle. Exactly. It signals that a major psychological barrier, trusting the device itself, seems to be overcome for most users. Okay, so pulling back from the individual test now, let's look at the bigger public health picture. Why is this kind of rapid, accessible testing so important right now in the U.S.? What's the situation? Well, we're still facing a significant challenge. There are nearly 1.2 million Americans living with HIV. And we still see over 30,000 new infections each year. Wow. But the statistic this test really aims at is this. Around 13% of people who have HIV don't know it. 13%. That's what? Over 150,000 people? Mm -hmm. Undiagnosed? That's the estimate, yes. Hundreds of thousands who aren't getting care and often unknowingly could be transmitting the virus. It's a huge gap in our response. And those are likely the people hardest to reach through traditional clinics, right? Because of the stigma, the location issues we talked about. Precisely. They represent the core challenge in managing the epidemic. So how does this test fit into the bigger national strategy? There is the Ending the HIV Epidemic Initiative, EHE. Yes, it connects directly to that. The EHE initiative has a very ambitious goal supported by the CDC to cut new HIV infections by 90% by the year 2030. 90% by 2030, that's not far away. That requires some major leaps forward. It really does. It demands new tools, new approaches. And this test is a perfect example of innovation needed to hit that target, especially on the diagnostic side. And EHE has those four main strategies, right? Diagnose, treat, prevent, respond. That's right. Four science-based pillars. And the instant test falls squarely under diagnose. The EHE plan explicitly calls for using novel tech to make diagnosis easier and more convenient. So this is literally the kind of tech they were envisioning. It fits the bill perfectly. It's designed to reach the folks the clinics might be missing. And if we can reach that 13% sooner, get them diagnosed. What's the immediate payoff for that person beyond just knowing their status? The biggest benefit is getting them into care faster. An early diagnosis means they can start antiretroviral therapy, or ART, sooner. Which improves their own health dramatically. Mm. It improves their long-term health outcomes, their lifespan, but it also has a massive public health impact. Mm. Effective art reduces the amount of virus in the body, the viral load, often to undetectable levels. Meaning they can't transmit it. Meaning the risk of transmitting HIV to others becomes negligible. So faster diagnosis directly supports the treat and prevent pillars too. It's all connected. That integration speed, privacy, reliability, feeding into earlier treatment and prevention, it really does feel like a powerful tool, as the CEO said. It is. It's giving control back to the individual, removing those traditional gatekeepers like clinic hours or travel time, <laughs> providing those immediate answers right when someone needs them most. And those immediate answers are critical when you think about that 13%. Hundreds of thousands of people yeah. getting accurate one-minute results privately into their hands could genuinely change the trajectory. It really could. This FDA approval, it kind of sets a new benchmark for decentralized diagnostics. Yeah. It proves high reliability testing for a major, often stigmatized condition can be done effectively outside a traditional clinic. So thinking about that potential, here's something for you, the listener, to consider. Given how well this rapid, private, self-test model works for HIV, with its 100% reliability, what other major health screening challenges out there? You know, those areas where we have gaps in screening, maybe due to stigma or access issues, where else could a similar one-minute, private, easily accessible test make the biggest difference? The possibilities seem pretty vast. 